Hi, this is Bruno. Thank you for listening to the songs in my channel. This LP vinyl is John Sibelius Violin Concerto D minor Op. number 47 the second and the third movement. How about von Karajan conducted and Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra performed and Christian Ferris played the violin. This LP vinyl was released in 1965 on Deutsche Grammophon label and the condition of the vinyl is very good in spite of the long period of time. It was played with Bulova as 919 vintage turntable made in 1964 and still it is working beautifully. And it is a very interesting match because this LP vinyl was released in 1965 and this turntable was just one year earlier, 1964, made. So this is a very interesting match. Also, I think this Sibelius Violin Concerto Op. No. 47, especially the second movement, it's really good song for a rainy day. So in Korea, it is raining for the two for two days, and I think tomorrow it'll, it'll be also rainy. So in this kind of rainy days, this Sibelius Violin Concerto, the second movement, fits really well for this kind of rainy day. That's just my opinion. And today, I hope to review some of my LP vinyl sets. So, I chose two LP vinyl sets today. One is Wagner, Tristan and Isolde, conducted by Wil Wilhelm Furtwängler. And the other one is another Wagner, Tristan and Isolde, conducted by Kerajan. So, this Tristan and Isolde was performed by Philharmonia Orchestra. On the other hand, <coughs> this Kerogen, Tristan and Isolde, was performed by Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra. And here I want to talk about some relationship between Kerogen and Fritz Bengler. These two world famous conductors had been some permanent conductor for Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra and Fritz Bengler is one generation earlier than Karajan. And while Karajan was a rising star in 1940s, Fritz Bengler was already in his prime time and even though Karajan still wanted to keep showing some respect to Fritz Fengler, but the journalism really did not say in that way. But instead, when Karajan could perform really well in Berlin, actually that was his first time conducting with Berlin Philharmonic Orchestra, and at that time, some journalist wrote an article like Kerajan's performing was really good and it was really successful. So all the elder conductors should learn something from Kerajan. So a journalist wrote some article like that and it made Furtwängler really angry. So since that time, Furtwängler really did not like Kerajan. So, while even in the Nazi era, even at that time in 1930s and 40s, um, Furtwängler was preferred by the Nazi party. 
So Kerrigan, even though he was really good at that time, uh, always Kerrigan had to be in the second place for Futbangla. But after the war is over, Futbangla could get the position for a permanent conductor for, for Berlin Philharmonic again. And in even 40s and 50s, he kept saying like, as long as I am in Berlin Philharmonic, I will not let Kerrigan have any chance for Berlin Phil Harmonic. So in that way, Kerrigan could not have enough chance in Berlin. But eventually, after Furtwängler's death, then Kerrigan could have some enough chance for for to conduct Berlin Phil Harmonic. So since that time, like uh, for from late 50s for the following 34 years, I think, Kerrigan could be the permanent conductor for Berlin Philharmonic. So, these two people, their relationships, their relationship was really complicated. And even though Kerrigan wanted to respect Furtwängler, but in Furtwängler's point of view, Kerrigan should have been some kind of naughty guy to him. So anyway, let's take a look at this Tristan and Isolde, conducted by Ferd Bangalore. And this picture shows the one moment of the myth about Tristan and Isolde and how beautiful it is. A really beautiful painting. And Let's take a look inside, inside the Epi box. So it was, it is EMI label. Oh, right under the, this. Let's take a look at the information booklet first. And it is saying it was released in 1965, this is the English version, and the recording should, recording should have been in 1950s, I think. Then as I told you, this is EMI label, and this is the cast. So Tristan and Isolde, one of the masterpieces by Wagner. Then for Tristan, for, for Isolde, Soprano, Kirsten Flagstad took the role, and for Rangain, Mezzo Soprano, Blanche the Thobum took the role, and for Tristan Tanner, Ludwig Sotaust took the role, and so on. So it was performed by the Philharmonia Orchestra and conducted by Wilhelm Furtwängler. And in, this is the next page, the story of the opera. So synopsis is written on here. So as you know, the story of Tristan and Isolde thrives from a saga of a great Antiquity. So on the left side, I think this is German. And on the right side, it is written in English. So there are the lines that two and side six. And still going on side eight. And even side nine and ten. So there should be five LP vinyls in this set. And let's take a, another look at the LP vinyl itself. So this is the label and his master's voice and sung in German, 
Tristan and Isolde. Prelude and Act One. As I told you, this LP vinyl was made in mid 1960s. So there are one, two, three, four, and five LP vinyls in this set. And I am sure that there will be some other time to play this Epivinyl set. Alright, so this time let's move on to Karajan. Wagner, Tristan and Isolde, and Berlin Philharmonic, and Karajan conducted. So let's take a look at this epivinyl box and as you can see in 1972 it was recorded and released in 1988 and Berlin, Berlin Philharmonic and Hubbard von Karajan conducted So let's take a look at the booklet, information booklet. So here you can see the picture of Karajan and Tristan and Isolde, John Vickers, Tristan, and Helga Dimesh, Isolde. So here is the cast, Wagner. Tristan and Isolde cast. So for Isolde, as I mentioned, Helga Donesh, soprano, took the role. And Tristan, the famous John Vickers, took the role, tenor. And so on. So Berlin Philharmonic performed and Herbert von Karajan conducted and recorded in 1972. And released in 1988 on the EMI label. So it looks like it had been a compact disc set, but as you know, this is not a compact disc at all. <laughs> so, I don't understand why the story about compact disc is in here anyway. Interesting. Let's look take a look at inside this uh, vinyl. So still it was digitally remastered in nineteen eighty eight and Tristan and Isolde. So this is the first one, second one. Third one, fourth one, so, oh, yeah. so one, two, three, four LP vinyls, and this was the place for the, the small information booklet like this. So it looks like they share the same information booklet with this compact compact disc CD sets and this LP vinyl. And that is very interesting. <laughs> but as I mentioned, this set was released in 1988, even though it was recorded in set 1972. So that could be so. That could be. Okay. So you just looked at the two different sets for Tristan and Ejeldi. Wagner. Did I show you the back of the... So nothing is in here. Right. So... You just listened to Sibelius Violin Concerto D minor, OP number 47 The second and third movement 
and I arranged the second, especially the second movement for the rainy day. And you, I briefly reviewed Wagner, Tristan, and Isolde. One from one conducted by Furtwängler, and the other one conducted by Karajan. Thank you for listening. And as long as you like the songs in my channel and my stories and reviews, I'll keep. I will try to keep doing, keep recording my old LP vinyls for you. Thank you again. And see you next time. Bye.